tales for dark nights. The following performance is a second round entry in the 2017 Evil Idol voice acting competition. Voting is simple. Following the performance, simply click the thumbs up icon on this video if you'd like them to become a member of the team, or the thumbs down if you'd rather they not. Voting on this entry will conclude one week after the date of its posting. Good luck to all of our contestants. A lot of my friends ask me why I quit being a beekeeper and are confused about why I quit a job I loved for life as a soulless factory worker. Well, I wish there was an easy answer for that. I got to see things that I never would have seen before. Go new places, meet new people. Life was generally an adventure. The pay was great since not too many people stuck around long enough to learn the trade. I've seen men twice the size of me quit the first day, after two or three stings. It's not a job for everyone, that's for sure, but I just thought bees were interesting as hell. Half the year, we would take the bees from New York to Florida for orange blossom. And I'm not talking about Tampa or Miami. This is middle of fuck nowhere, Florida. Meth and inbred and religious cult, Florida. It's kind of place where the odd is the norm and even odder things can fade from observation. But sometimes the hidden shows its face. Sometimes the moon peers through the ghostly willows and picks you to share its secrets with. It was a Friday night, and I just got out of the shower when my boss Frank knocked on my door. Hey, buddy! He gleamed, almost a little too enthusiastically. I knew he wanted something from me, but... I love my boss, even though he could be a dick from time to time. Hey Frank, want a beer? He obliged and began his pitch. Good work this week, buddy. The girls are in great shape. I couldn't be happier. Anyways, I really want to give you the weekend off. You really deserve it, so I'll make a deal with you. Me and Sue are going down to the Keys for the weekend, and I'd like to leave tonight. But I have to move those northern hives into a new bee yard I just picked up today. Lady owns a goat farm, and there's willow out the ass for ten miles in every direction. Prime real estate. So let me get to the point. If you think you can move those hives over to her yard for me, and I can just go on my merry way, I'll give you off till Tuesday. And an extra hundred dollars. Think you can manage that without fucking it up? I agreed, and he seemed elated to be relieved of his obligations. Try and get out of this trailer and have some fun, huh? I had mixed feelings on loading bees. I loved it because it was so surreal and dreamlike. You have to wait till night when all the bees are back in the hive, so it's dark out. If you're lucky, the moon will be out glowing through the plumes of smoke floating through the air with the scent of burnt hay. The worst part was that bees don't fly at night. They crawl. They crawl up your pant leg, under your sack, down your boot, unless you want to wear a full beekeeper suit in 90 degree weather. Luckily. Everything went smoothly, and I made the drive up to the goat farm. It looked really eerie in the dark, with the willow branches hanging low, and the Spanish moss gave a real swampy look to the area. As I drove down the twisted, long driveway, I saw a dark, shadowy figure standing in the middle, blocking my way. I slowed down, trying to make out what it was, but soon realized it was nothing but a goat. A black, long-bearded bastard. I always like goats. They're funny and stubborn animals. Always getting into mischief and being where they're not supposed to. And I guess that night was no different. God damn it. I chuckled to myself. The little guy wouldn't move, so I put the truck in park and got out to shoo him away. He barely even acknowledged me, and I had to literally push him away to get him to move. I think he got bored with his game, because he walked right down the driveway towards an old-looking, plantation-styled house that I could hardly make out. I got back into the truck, pulled into a little mode section on the side, and loaded the bees with pretty much no hassle. Back into the truck I went, and was about to leave when I looked towards the house. 
There had to have been about 20 goats all huddled around each other. I couldn't see much for a minute, but then the moon must have came out from under a cloud. I realized there was a naked woman kneeling in the middle of the herd. Now, I'm not going to get into much detail because I don't like to think about it, but she sure as hell wasn't ugly. She had been about 25, pale white skin glowing in the moonlight, with her eyes closed. I really didn't look too long because I knew if I didn't tear my eyes away right then and there, I would be pressing my luck. So with a long weekend ahead of me, I drove off to Orlando. My weekend in Orlando was pretty uneventful, and well, shit. I honestly wish I just stayed back at the trailer to drink some beers and play some guitar, maybe catch up on some reading. I cut my losses Sunday morning and headed back to my boss's place. I did score a little weed while I was out, so I smoked and fucked around my guitar for the rest of the day and called it a night by ten. I had some crazy dreams that night about a bear mauling me to death, and I woke up in a cold sweat. I kept tossing and turning, trying to get comfortable again, and my hand grazed against something moist and cold. I turned to face the other side of my bed and saw the girl from the goat farm. She was laying naked on top of my sheet seductively sprawled out. A mix of fear and confusion were my initial reaction, but as she crawled on top of me, those soon gave way to pure animalistic lust. I'll leave it at that. I, I can't bear to think about it. Either way. At the climax of that ordeal, I realized that I was still dreaming, because I woke up tangled in my sheets, drenched in sweat. I couldn't go back to sleep, and I had the next day off, so I started a fire and opened a beer. I smoked and drank and played guitar till the sun came up. I had the dream again. My boss woke me up Tuesday afternoon. He laughed and thought I was hungover. I didn't argue with him about it. Well, I hope you're rested, because we have a problem. I went to the yard that you moved this morning, and it looks like we got a bear on our hands. Fashion must have tore open five hives over the weekend. Now, I let you sleep, so can you stay up tonight and take that son of a bitch down? I was too embarrassed from sleeping in on a work day to refuse. He handed me his pistol. This wouldn't be my first time hunting down a bear for my boss, but I never actually ran into one. I got back to the goat farm around 9 that night, under the glow of a pale yellow moon. I was nervous about the bear. I was even more nervous about having to talk to the girl I'd been having dreams of, about the fact that I have to take down a bear on her property. I loaded the gun and walked up to the huge wraparound veranda. The boards creaked under my weight as I approached the door and knocked. No answer. I knocked again. Nothing. Just as I turned away from the door, I heard the primal shrieks of a woman in pure terror and then some sort of animalistic grunting. I put two and two together real quick and ran towards the source of the sound. It was coming from near the beehives. But before I could even get there, I was met by the fearful embrace of the girl from my dreams. She was shaking and holding me so close and so tight, all I could see was the top of her head. Her nails dug into my back till I felt blood trickle. I pulled her away to ask her about the bear, but she grabbed the back of my head and pulled me in for a kiss. Her mouth was sweet and sticky and hot. I felt her tongue wriggle around in my mouth and then a familiar pain in an unfamiliar place. A bee sting. I pushed her off of me once more and looked upon her face. It was no longer the young, beautiful girl of my dreams, but an old, withered hag with sagging, veiny breasts and a tattered body. Her hair was caked with something sticky. Her fingernails were long, dirty, and feral-looking. But her mouth was covered in gobs of honey and wax. Dead bees and larvae lay dead, drowned in honey on her chin, and stuck to the hair on her upper lip. I bent over and expelled the contents of my stomach, 
felt pure disgust wash over me as I realized that I had been intimate with this abomination. She seemed to know and relish in my internal dilemma, and she let out a perverse, jovial laughter as she watched me in my state of anguish and confusion. Without thinking twice, I pulled the pistol out and loaded it right into her head. A mixture of blood and what looked like sawdust trickled out of her. Then, slowly, clumps of brown, woolly hair sprouted up in the wounds. She seemed more irritated than in pain, and slowly she advanced towards me and put a gnarled and elongated hand on the top of my head, squeezing with what I assumed to be all her strength. I then felt a long tongue tickling my ear, probing for entrance. Fearing for my life, I grabbed on and tackled her straight into a desecrated pallet of beehives, head first. Tens of thousands of bees were crawling in the dark, emitting a choir of buzzing that almost resembled a hiss. I grabbed the hold of her once more and buried her face into the frames of a broken hive, bees crawling all across my body, stinging me. She writhed and screamed as hundreds of bees stung her face and crawled into her mouth and nose. She soon began to gurgle and seize, and even though the pain was blinding, I held her in place until she finally became limp in the bee's final act of vengeance. Last I remember, I was crawling sightless through the infested grass to find any form of sanctuary. And everything went hazy after that. I was told that the police got called when I didn't show up to work the next day. I guess they found a bear who had been stung to death on that goat farm and that they found me on the veranda, swollen from hundreds of stings. Though they never did find the man that owned the house. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, don't forget to cast your vote for this contestant via either a thumbs up or thumbs down vote. New entries will be posted throughout July. Be sure to tune in and vote for each of them and help decide who becomes the next evil idol. In the meantime, turn off the lights and turn on the dark. Chilling Tales for Dark Night.